Welcome back to the beginner PLC Mega project. So far in episode 1 we created our very first TIA portal project. In episode 2 we learned about inputs and outputs, the eyes and hands of our PLC. Today in episode 3 it's finally time to start programming. We'll learn the basics of ladder logic, contacts and coils. By the end of this video you'll have your first working PLC program controlling a conveyor motor with a start and a stop button. Let's get started. Before we drag anything onto the screen, let's ask, what is ladder logic? Ladder logic or LAD is the most common programming language for PLCs. It is designed to look like the electrical schematics that electricians already know. In ladder, we have rungs of logic that resemble relay diagrams. Picture a ladder, two vertical rails and rungs in between. Power flows from left rail to the right rail, but only if the conditions on the rung are true. At the end of the rung, we place outputs, or coils, which represent motors, lamps, or memory bits. So when we build logic, we're really creating conditions under which a coil turns on. Now let's talk about contacts, or the building block of ladder logics. We have two types of contacts, normally open and normally close. A normally open contact, or NO, closes when its linked input or bit is 1 or true. In other words, if a start button is true, the contact closes, letting power flow. Or if you push the start button, the contact closes, letting power flow. A normally closed contact, or NC, closes when its linked input or bit is zero. In other words, if a stop button is zero or not pressed, the contact closes. When a stop button is true or pressed, it opens and it stops the wrong. This might feel backwards at first, but it makes sense if you think in terms of electrical wiring. A normally closed contact passes current until the button is pressed. At the end of each rung, we have coils. A coil represents an output. It could be motor, lamp, valve, or just a memory bit. When the rung conditions are true, the coil energizes. If they are false, the coil de-energizes. So for example, we have a start button and a coil which is a motor. If the start button is pressed or the contact is closed, the motor is energized. If the start button is false or not pressed, the motor is off. Simple, right? But let's make it a bit more useful. This is the PLC Beginner Mega Project Playlist. We're building a complete packaging line step by step learning timers, counters, alarms, and HMI along the way. Hit the subscribe button to follow the playlist. Okay, let's build our first real run. Open TIA portal and open your saved project. Click on Project View. And now go to Program Blocks. We do programming in uh, OB1, so let's open it. Beautiful. So we have our network one here. Um, to start programming, drag a normally open contact 
and link it to start button. So just click on the question marks, start button, there we have it. Okay, just click on the start button and hit enter. All right. Now drag a normally closed contact Click on question mark and link it to stop button. At the end of the rung, drag a coil and link it to conveyor motor. Beautiful. So what happens if a start button is pressed and a stop button is not pressed, then the wrong is true, conveyor motor energizes. Release the start button, wrong goes false and motor stops. It works, but notice the motor only runs while the button is held down. That's not practical. We'll fix that in the next episode by adding a latch circuit, but for now, this is your very first working rung of ladder logic. Okay, now let's start simulating the logic and see if our program actually works. To start the simulation, click on this monitor icon on, on the top and run the simulator. Okay, this is uh, Siemens PLC Sim version 20, that's the newest version of uh, simulator. On the right hand side, you can see the 71500. Click on the plus icon and add it to the uh, simulator environment. So <clears throat> you can make it a smaller. I just put it on the right hand side of the screen and you can also pin it on the screen so it doesn't move. Here you can see the power icon, just click on that to power on the, the CPU. And on the TIA screen, you can see that it uh, automatically identified the PLC seam. Just give it a few seconds. Right. So, yes, here. Here it is. Uh, you can see that our IP addresses uh, exactly matching the IP address on the PLC. That's that's automatic action of the TIA portal. But if you if you want to change the IP address, that's really easy. You can do that in hardware configuration. Click on Load to download your code into the simulator. Give it a few seconds. It first start compiling your code and then you click on load to transfer your logic into your simulator. Here you can choose to start your module and then hit finish. Look at the simulator. <coughs> now you can see the green light on instance one, which is your um, Simulated CPU. Now click on your project and right click on that. Go to properties and then protection and make sure this option is checked. It lets you to simulate your logic. So check check that before uh, proceeding with the simulation. Now click on go online. Let me just check my hardware for a second so it's same as before we have one digital input card and digital output card now I go online and you can see the green checks everywhere that's beautiful it means there is no error and our logic is perfectly loaded onto the simulator so if you look at the network one you can see that green power flow because the start, start button is not pressed, it stopped there. So let's modify the state. I try to modify it to one, but you can see nothing changes. 
and basically we cannot change the state of this input. The reason is that we have the actual hardware in our project and it's like it's it's like real project. You cannot change the state of a signal or a push button or a sensor and the reason is simply because we have our uh, real hardware in our project and that's dangerous actually in, in, in real uh, project if, if you want to change the state of any signal that might cause uh, that might basically uh, bypass an interlock or a step which might cause uh, danger in your plant but we can use force table in order to force that tag which is not preferred here just to show you I'm gonna force this tag to to show you what happens if you have this situation in your project you can force attack temporary uh, but it's not recommended so now I, ha I added a start button on the force table and I can force its value to true hit on the force and you can see that the power flow goes all the way to the coil but again, this is not recommended. In, in real project, temporary, like if you have a damaged sensor or um, a proximity, you want to basically, um, for a couple of minutes, uh, let the operator uh, continue the production uh, until the replacement happens. But it is not recommended and it is not the normal state of the PLC. So here for our simulation, we can delete the hardware because that makes everything easier we don't need to use the force table so I delete the hardware you can also do that in your project we change the hardware configuration so again we need to download our hardware to our simulator right click on the your hardware and download the hardware onto your PLC, click on load and then finish. Okay, there is no error. Um, go back to your OB1 and monitor the project. Everything's green, beautiful. Again, monitor your OB1. So now we can basically modify the state of the signals. A stop button is not pressed, that's normally closed. So I modify the start button to one. We basically simulating uh, the pressing of the start button. And as you can see, the power flow goes all the way to the conveyor motor and the motor is running. I de-energize that simply by setting the state of the start button to false. So the, the logic is actually working. I again press the start button and this time I press the stop button. I press it and you can see the motor stops. I release the stop button and there we go. The motor starts again. This is the simplest but most important PLC program you'll ever write. Every automation system, no matter how advanced, is built on contacts and coils. This one specifically might not be practical in real practice uh, because the, the operator should hold down the start button all the time. In the next episode, we will learn how to use latch in, in the projects. Um, so today we learned ladder logic structure, rungs, contacts, and coils, normally open versus normally closed contacts, and how to build the start to stop rung in TIA portal, how to test it in simulation. In the next episode, we are going to talk more about the simulator. This new version of the PLC sim is uh, more advanced. It has uh, a lot more features than the previous versions, but you know, gradually over the course of this um, mega project will learn different features of that and be tested together. 
As your homework, write your own run with two inputs in series and one coil. For example, two push buttons must be pressed together to energize the motor. This teaches you and logic. Then try two in parallel. Either button can turn on the motor. That's all logic. Next time in episode 4, we'll improve this motor logic with a latch and interlocks so the motor keeps running after start is pressed and ear stop also can stop it instantly. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to follow the playlist and see you in the next one.